For those of you who've been hoping for video number 28, you can thank all of the people who have continued to leave positive comments on all of my older videos. It's been encouraging to get messages almost weekly, uh, many of which are people asking me to keep the series going. So after a nearly six year hiatus, welcome back. The topic I want to cover today is the basics of electricity. It's a topic I've mainly avoided over the past 27 videos because I felt there are better sources of information online um, than I can provide. But my hope is that I can explain the basics to an upcoming fire alarm tech in a way that most efficiently focuses on the aspects of electricity that you need to know to do your job. Um, and then once you have a solid foundation there, I would encourage you to go explore some of the other sources that get a little more in depth and cover the topic more thoroughly than I can. After watching the next few videos, I would like you to be able to answer the following four questions. What is voltage? What is current? What is resistance? And what is the relationship between those three? I'd also like for you to know how to use your meter to take measurements of those three components of electricity and to know what your meter is telling you, to know what the values mean so that you can troubleshoot circuits and um, components and panels, etc. The first topic I want to deal with is voltage. Voltage is an electrical potential difference between two points. That means with the presence of voltage, or at least what we refer to as voltage, a potential exists, but no work is necessarily being done. I want to start by showing an example of a different type of potential energy that's a little bit more intuitive for us to understand. If you look at the wonderful drawing of this guy and imagine him holding this book, we can all understand that there is a potential difference between the height of this book and the height of the floor. If he were to drop this book, we all have an understanding from experience about what type of sound that might make, what type of damage might be done to the book or the floor, and how much it might hurt if his foot were to get in the way. If we were to slide this table underneath the book, we now understand that there is a lesser potential difference between the book and the height of this table. Electrical potential works in a similar way, but it's just much less intuitive. Here's this guy again, and now we're going to bring into the picture a battery. If I were to ask you what the potential difference was between the black lead on this battery and the red lead, you might say 12 volts because it's written on the side. But assuming you had no experience with this and it wasn't written on the side, there really wouldn't be a way for you to know what the potential difference was, what the electrical potential difference was between those two points. Fortunately, we have some tools at our disposal. I'm going to bring into the screen my drawing of a fluke multimeter. This is one of the most important tools you'll use as a technician, and it's important that you get to know how to use it. So. Um, quickly, I'm going to go through each one of these settings and just give a, a brief description. First one is off. Hopefully that's pretty obvious to you. The second one above that is the V with the little squiggly line, and that stands for AC voltage. Above that is DC voltage. Um, at some point I hope to get into what the difference between AC and DC voltage is. You probably, you probably know that already but hopefully we'll get into that at some point. Above that is millivolts. Um, this setting I almost never use with what I probably would say never use it on purpose. Um, anytime I'm metering a circuit for voltage, if it's got less than a volt, let's say it has 300 millivolts, that would still show up with just the DC voltage setting. And I'm not doing any precise enough measurements where this fails me, so I pretty much never use the, the millivolt setting. Moving on from that is resistance. Um, there's a little bit of something that you'll have to know about how that works that I'll get into when we start talking about resistance. 
Um, after that is continuity, which is similar to resistance, but this setting is more specifically for shorts. Essentially, the, the meter just makes a sound when you have continuity. Continuity meaning if you were to meter two different points of the same wire, the meter's detecting continuity between those two, it'll beep. A lot of guys will use this for resistance. I almost never use this either because once you get used to what the resistance readings mean, that's good enough, unless you can't physically see your meter and you need to hear it beep. After that is milliamps and amps. Those are two measures of current. You would always want to start with amps um, if you're not sure about how much to expect and then work your way down to milliamps if need be. But there's also something with this that is important to know. You have to change how your leads are set on your meter before that setting will work. And you have to be a little bit careful with that. So when we get into resist, or I'm sorry, when we get into current, um, we'll explain, I'll explain how to set your meter up for that and um, what it is you have to be careful of. Okay, so this guy, um, hopefully I don't have to tell you that none of this is drawn to scale. Um, this would not be the most useful tool if it were bigger than you were. Um, but so we were talking about the potential difference of this battery and even though it says 12 volts, maybe there's not 12 volts, maybe it's, maybe the battery's dying or dead or needs to be charged. Um, what we would do is we would hook our meter lead, oh this is not a good color to use, we'd hook a meter lead up to common, this would be your black lead, and your red lead up to this terminal here, which is for resistance, voltage, or that's a picture, that's a symbol of a diode. I should have done a little research before starting this video, I don't know, uh, I'm just going to ignore that. But essentially this is how, this is where your meter leads would be plugged in when you're metering voltage or resistance or continuity. Um, you always will leave the black lead plugged into the common and then the red one would move around depending on what meter reading you are going to be taking. So in this case, this meter, if, he were, if we were to put each meter lead onto one terminal of the battery, depending on the charge of the battery, we would get about 12 volts. Those of you who've been doing this a while would probably say, well, if it's a fully charged battery, there's going to be more than 12 volts because of the voltage of each cell, but we're, we're not going to get into that for now. What would happen if instead of putting one meter lead onto the negative terminal of the battery and the other onto the positive, what would happen if we put both of them onto the same lead? In this case, both of them onto the negative lead of the battery. First of all, I should have mentioned um, our meter would be set to DC voltage in this case. That's a crappy arrow, but you get the point. Um, I I may at some point make a video of the difference between AC voltage and DC voltage. I probably won't. Um, there's plenty of information on that online. I would encourage you to go look it up, but I'm going to assume you know the difference. And so this being a battery, we know that it is direct current. It's not made, it's not, the, the power is not produced by some sort of a motor. So um, we're going to be on direct current. Well, what would we get, what would you expect to get four meter reading on direct current voltage if you had both meter leads on one terminal? The answer is 0, 0.000 volts. That may seem precise, but the reason I um, the reason I emphasize that, if your meter leads were just dangling in the air, you'd get some voltage that was not 0.00, .00 volts. Your meter would be detecting little tiny potential differences in the air. But again, driving home the point that voltage is a potential difference, when both meter leads are on exactly the same point, there is zero potential difference between those points. This is something that's useful when you're metering circuits in the field. You, as a habit, you always want to be metering for voltage first if you're not exactly sure what you're encountering. So let's say you open up a junction box, you disconnect a set of wires. The first thing I'm going to meter for is voltage, possibly AC, possibly DC, depending on the system, depending on what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to meter for voltage, and if 
my reading is 0, 0.000 volts, I know that I've got either a short or possibly I'm metering my resistor or something like that. Now for some of you that may not make a lot of sense and that's okay, don't worry about that. Hopefully it will in the future and it definitely will once you get some more experience. But again, I'm just trying to drive home the point that since voltage is a potential difference, when you're metering two points that have continuity between them or two of the exact same point, there is no potential difference between those two. That would be like the book resting on the floor in my original example. There's no potential difference due to gravity when the book's already on the floor. 